Buenos dias, muchachos y muchachas. Today we are in Isamal and the surrounding areas. We're going to explore some of these old archaeological sites here. I'm currently just walking on one of them. At the moment it's called Chaltun A. As you can see, it is. I'm basically walking on the base of a little old structure here and it's covered in in the forest. It's pretty cool and there's these phenomenal phenomenal like orangey yellow birds flying around here in the trees. I'll see if I can capture some some footage of them. But look at this. This is like proper mystical we have this basically like a small pyramid, I guess here. So the deal with Itzamal is one of these, wow, look at this. The lighting here is phenomenal. This is, wow, I did not expect that. What we have done today is basically we've rented a car for the next couple of days and we're going to go around and explore most of the peninsula or some of the nearby peninsula area here around uh, Merida. So as I say, today we're in Isamal and the surrounding areas. In Isamal there's loads of these old Mayan archaeological sites such as this one right here. These old pyramids. And as you can see, like you can actually get a decent vantage point out over the um, over the region here. Let's see, this is the top here, it seems like. And this peninsula, the Yucatan Peninsula, is just so flat that you really see it here. You really see it up here. Look at that, absolutely not a single hill for as long as the eye can see. Look at that, out this way. There is not a hill at all. So as I was saying, the deal with Itzamal It's basically there are loads of these pyramids around here. Old pyramids, archaeological sites, uh, also everything else in the pyramids today. But this structure that I'm stood on here certainly looks like a pyramid. You see one step, next step, next step, next plateau, and so on and so forth. Let's go and, and explore. It's like this was one of the last towns on all of the uh, Yucatan Peninsula from the Mayans that the uh, Spaniards was able to that they were able to actually uh, conquer back in the day which is why there are so many of these archaeological sites here around here it's certainly a very different experience than coming to something like Chichen Itza uh, where we were a couple months ago in Uxmal that we're going to later this weekend. Because I mean here, if I just be quiet, you know, you can hear those birds, the sound of the, of the forest, and you can more imagine like how it actually was to live here in this dense forest here walk through these kind of pathways. It's absolutely beautiful here. Highly recommend coming and seeing this, uh, this town. This is the first stop of today. After here, we're gonna head into Isamal town itself. And then uh, from there, explore in Itzamal and then uh, what else we're we going to do then we're going to head out to the beach 
potentially camp out at the beach tonight. Then tomorrow, Uxmal, and some more cenotes. So yeah, definitely subscribe and give it a like to the video so you can follow the next coming videos after here as well. All right, let's keep exploring. See these kind of pathways is what I'm saying. Just look at this. Just going down through here. You can just imagine being like the chief and you have your your guys down here behind you and you're here like Sebastian the the great explorer the great Mayan warrior says we must kill the pesky Spaniards trying to invade or something like that <laughs> Yeah, absolutely gorgeous, as I say. The fact that you can just walk around on the structures here, even though it's nowhere near as grandiose and mega as something like Chichen Itza, this uh, experience of just simply walking on the structure makes it so much more like makes the experience completely different and just look at that that is phenomenal all right we made it to the monastery here in Merida or Itzamal sorry <laughs> not Merida and this is an impressive old building. This monastery was built here by the Spaniards when they finally did succeed in conquering this uh, this city here. Okay, good, good. Let's see. Here we go. This is absolutely gorgeous. So you have this archway all the way around obviously the main church over here unfortunately it's it's closed right now you have some some guy some statue here as well I imagine it's the Pope supposedly the Pope came um, here back in the day to like finally tell the Itzamal people that now you must be Catholics in the same way as uh, in the same way as the, in the church in Merida in the center in Merida there's supposed to be a lot of old um, actually uh, stones and rocks from the Mayan temples themselves back in the day that they used in the same way as the church back in, in the center of Merida to basically show that now we, the Spanish, dominate this uh, this place here. As you can see, these these rocks here on the pillars is a different kind of rock than the rest of it. And there you go, walking down. We've got some local couples here. The whole city is what is this yellow color. Here we have a mural. Sepo de la San Tacvasada. No idea what that means. If you know what it means, let me know downstairs in the comments. There we go, yeah. As you see, there used to be some kind of mural here on the wall as well. Let's see, kind of have a shape of a, I don't know, kind of hard to figure it out. We have a, a, a sign over here, I imagine like the, the sign of the of Itzamales is like that, I guess. 
kind of looks like the shape of a boat here. That might be my Viking roots that is deceiving me here, most probably. Though we are close. Close to the ocean, close to the coastline here, so maybe it is certainly a possibility that, that that's what it is. Then we have here, there's a little opening over here. But yes, I said, it's sadly closed. Can't get in, but yeah, you have the obligatory cross there with the lights. But yeah, a little souvenir shop here for your religious merchandise, Team Jesus. If you know what I'm referencing there, let me know. <laughs> yeah, I was told you could find little, like specific rocks on the bottom of the wall. I read that somewhere that are significantly different from everything else relating to the, to the Mayans back in the day. So I'm gonna go look for that. If I find it, I'll turn the camera back on in that instance and you'll be able to see, otherwise I'll just... I'll just show you the view of the... of the main square here. As you see, it's all yellow in the city. Everything is yellow. It is very beautiful here. Yeah. Lots of stuff for sales, hats and so on and so forth down there. Horses and cartridges. Alright. And with that said, I'll end this little section here. Take in some more of the church. See if I can find if I can find what, what's going on. If I can find these special rocks and, and so on. And then then we'll see. I'll pick it up later. So here we go, as I was saying, one of these rocks originally from a Mayan temple that we had here in the region uh, historically that the Spanish put here in the, in the temple to, uh, yeah, to show that now they are in charge of religion here. As you can see, there are actually pyramids over here, I don't know, over there in those palm trees behind there. I don't know, I don't think you can really see it very well, but there are actually pyramids over there. So we're going to go and explore them afterwards. And that's it, the information uh, plate over there I was just saying. This is considered the second biggest atrium um, in in the world, the largest in Las Americas, in the Americas, only the one in the Vatican, like the St. Peter's Church of the, of, uh, the Vatican in Rome, is bigger uh, than this one here. The atrium, I think, refers to the, the, the green square, the plaza in the middle there, like this square in the middle where the grass is today. I've never been to the one in Rome, and yeah. I'm not quite sure what the difference between atrium and monastery is, to be honest. I'm not the biggest religion kind of guy, but yeah. That's a little bit about the, the history of this phenomenal, phenomenal looking uh, atrium, I should say then, not monastery. You uneducated white, white man here. All right. That's it. The big famous monastery of Itzamal. It's very good. I'd highly recommend coming here. A bit of nice views. There's this into slightly over the rest of the city. As it's it's a small city and all of Yucatan is is so flat so you can have nice views from up here. And it's just it looks phenomenal, right? Like I mean this, this quaint 
very cool people just going around take a couple round trips find these rocks from the from the Mayan from the Mayan temples that the Spanish has, has uh, put here because there's so much history to this place there we have another statue of the Pope over there down at the in the roundabout over here if the camera wants to focus but yeah as I say lots and lots of stuff to you know, to see in this little town we only just got got here and we've already seen two things one archaeological site and we're gonna see a couple more find some food as well so yeah I'll end this little section here and let's go and explore some more vamos leones All right, so there's the other, one of the other pyramids here. This one is significantly bigger, eh? Than the other one, but unfortunately, as you can see, this gate here is closed. It does not seem like we're able to get in there at the moment, which is a massive bummer, because, I mean, look at that. That is beautiful. I would love to go up there. That's what we could see from the from the square up there on top of uh, of Isamal. So yeah, that's a bummer. That is a massive bummer. But yeah, we'll keep exploring. See what we can find. Oh. I'm beginning to smell some dinner here, or some lunch. Look at that. A little farmer. This little bucket here. Selling. I don't know if it's a restaurant or if they are selling um, actual food in there or what's going on. Like it's just a little farmer who sells who sells food to or who sells chickens to people in town. There's no restaurant sign or anything. Oh, look at these houses as well. Like. Imagine having that pyramid as your background or as your backyard. Here we go. You see the the yellow of the streets. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, hello. What are you doing there, guys? Here we are at the next pyramid. Look at this one. Kakak. Could I can see I think it's the name. This is phenomenal. We have the pyramids here. These guys coming down. Look how small they look compared to the pyramid. So yeah, this is the second one. How are you? This is the next one. Wow. Look at this. This is phenomenal. Kinak Kinich Kakmu. This is one of the most important structures of Mesoamerica. Its base measures 200 meters by 800 and by 180 meters and the height is 34 meters it says it was built 400 to 600 uh, before Christ and must have covered much o much older buildings closing off the northern side of the great plaza of Isamal for sure the location is of this structure was influenced by the presence of a cave of, or limestone extra, extraction pit, an important sacred place for the Mesoma, 
Mesoamerican cultures, which was for, forever entombed with this building. According to tradition, it was dedicated to a sun god, who in the form of fire Macau, don't know what a fire Macau is, descended daily to pick up uh, offerings which were made, uh, made to it. What is outstanding about this construction uh, are the large stones which were used, especially those shaping of staircases or employed by cornices. This building was still well preserved in the middle of the 16th century. Uh, the same for the, stru for the structures, which has now completely disappeared. Okay. So there's the quick history of this place. Look at the view in through the city here. The staircase looks phenomenal from the, from the side as well. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And this is the thing, right? You look at these pyramids. And you don't really, when you hear, at least in my, in my, from my point of view, when I hear, um, when I hear pyramid, I instantly think Egypt. Oh look, can you see the fire down there, or the smoke? I think that's uh, that's a, a family cooking the pibil. They have the culture of uh, cooking underground here slow cooked meat underground absolutely delicious food as well um, so I guess that's what she's cooking down there anyways as I said when you think pyramids at least in my in my case when I think pyramids I don't think Mexico I instantly think the Egyptian pyramids and yeah little did you know there are massive pyramids here in Mexico as well and apparently I read like the biggest pyramids in the world are actually here in Mexico not the ones in Giza from uh, in uh, in Egypt it's just a little fun fact for you there that I don't think many many people actually know if you were to um, if you were to have a quiz back in a, in a Trivial Pursuit game or something like that. So yeah, just a little fun fact about Mexico. Wow. And then we have the main top of the pyramid here on top of the plateau, so a pyramid on top of a pyramid. This is absolutely majestic. This is phenomenal, as I said. Looking at these pyramids, like... Look how big it is. That's what she said. Oh. And yeah, I certainly didn't actually know about this before we came here to Mexico, before we, we started to explore here what's actually here on the Yucatan Peninsula. Of course, I've heard about the Mayans, I've heard about Chichen Itza, but still, as I said, the the fact that there are so many pyramids and old like uh, um, old historical sites in this ho this whole um, peninsula here of, of Yucatan actually has taken me quite a lot by surprise to be honest it's phenomenal that they're still here like compared to the ones in Chichen Itza and that here you can actually go ahead and and actually touch the stuff and here you can see what I'm talking about as well these rocks that were that we saw in the in the monastery 
with the church or the the big chapel over there, the big church in in the center. These are the actual rocks that they would have used to build those pillars back in the day. The Spanish, when they came to build, uh, when they came to build that monastery, they would have actually constructed and used. And you can see this this significant rock here is the one that they would have used. It's absolutely beautiful. Look at that view as well. And here you can see just just how flat the Yucatan Peninsula really is. You can see another lady cooking some lovely dinner over there. Wow, just wow. The scale of this. Down there some houses and just forest as far as the eye is able to see. It is absolutely stunning. This is my kind of history class, you know. Actually being able to get stuck into it. And like get up close. Let's just get down here. And actually be able to get up close and personal and touch history. You just understand it from so much better when you can when you can touch it way better than sitting in a classroom and, and having your your teacher tell you about how it was. Much better, much more interesting to just go and feel it and see it and touch it for oneself. It's phenomenal this. Maybe that's why I didn't have much of an idea why that there were pyramids here in this uh, Yucatan region that the Mayans actually built these phenomenal pyramids back in the day since maybe that's why because I didn't listen enough <laughs> to my history teacher back in the day all right Enough rambling. I'll you can get a feel for the density of the forest here as well. And this is just on top of the pyramids, but you have those birds here as well. You have the palm trees. Absolutely gorgeous. Isamal. Massive star to Isamal massive recommendation to come and see Itzamal if you're if you like history if you like to see history get up close and personal with history being able to touch it feel it and see it for yourself no guardrails there's no people not a lot of people here either so I highly 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 recommend coming here if you're Yucatan ever Look at that then we have the the church over here in the background That's the monastery over there Just to give you a an idea of how high we're actually up here Let's give it a go then Trying to walk up the stairs here all the way up this is what I was saying like how you can really interact with history here in these kind of places just have to watch your feet in these surfaces there as we as we come up and the view just really opens up here wow you have that monastery there in the middle of the whole city let's get all the way up you can enjoy the 
the view behind me as we climb. Let's go. Vamos, vamos, vamos. Put my lamp down there. And there we go. Itzama city and the surroundings. The church over here. There you really see why it's the yellow city. That yellow in the middle there. Those three eyes down there, how small they are compared to to us up here. Stunning. Absolutely. Incredibly stunning. And how the how the bloody church just sticks out like a sore thumb right there. In the middle. You have that? The church there and you have the the pyramid here and then you have out the other way just forest and forest as far as the eye goes let's give you a little bit of zoom on it there it's just as far as it goes we have a little one fire there one fire here it's all these I guess it's these Cochinita Pibil, as I was telling telling you about, or the Pibil, the underground uh, way of uh, preparing meat here. So, yeah, with an overview of this fantastic village, town, village, what would you call it? Not much to it, really, in terms of size, but there's a lot to see around here. So with that said, I think I'll end this video here. I'll say thanks for watching, hit the like button, click subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Vamos Leones!